Hey guys! In this video I'm going to show you the steps for using mesh current method for circuit analysis and I'm going to walk you through um, using these steps with the circuit that we used in lab last week. So step one is to determine how many meshes there are. A mesh is defined as a loop which does not contain any other loops within it. So for this circuit we have one, two, three meshes. You're going to assign a mesh current to each one if they have not already been assigned. And every element in the circuit is going to have at least one mesh current associated with it. Step two is to determine how many mesh currents are known, if any. Step three, assign voltages to each of the resistors in the mesh where KVL will be done. Now the polarity and names are arbitrary, but they must be given for this method. Step four, Perform KVL for each mesh where the mesh currents are unknown. These equations are in terms of the voltages you assigned in step 3. In step 5, using Ohm's law, rewrite these equations in terms of the mesh currents that go through each resistor. Repeat step 4 and 5 until all the meshes are done. So I'm going to show you how to use this method with the circuit that we had in lab last week. So step 1, determine how many meshes there are. Like I said, this circuit has three meshes, and we're going to assign a mesh current to each one. So we're going to say this is I1, this is I2, and this is I3. Step two, determine how many mesh currents are known. So for this circuit, we don't know any of the mesh currents yet, so what we're going to do is we're going to write I1 equals, we don't know, I2 equals, we don't know, and I3 equals we don't know. Step three, assign voltages to each of the resistors in the mesh where KVL will be done. Since we don't know any of the currents for any of the, any of the meshes, we're going to be assigning voltages to every resistor. So like I said, the polarity and names are arbitrary, but they must be given. So I'm just going to assign voltages to each resistor, and I'm just gonna call them R, RV1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. Okay, after that we're going to perform KVL for each mesh where the mesh currents are unknown. These equations are in terms of the voltages you assigned. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say KVL mesh 1. So KVL says that the sum of voltages for a closed loop is equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from any point. You can start anywhere in a mesh. You're going to walk through the loop and you're just going to sum the voltages and set them equal to 0. So for mesh 1 we have, if we start up here, we're going to go down through V1. So V1, we have V2, so plus V2. And then here we hit the negative on the 6 volts, so it's going to be minus 6 equals zero. So V1 plus V2 minus six volts equals zero. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that six over. V1 plus V2 equals six. And then step five, using Ohm's law, rewrite these equations in terms of the mesh currents that go through each resistor. So to rewrite this, V1, what is that equal to? V1, we have, if we, if we just look at only this resistor and we pull it out, so this is what R1 looks like. And we have V1, right? So what we have is we have I1 coming in this way from mesh 1, but we also have I2 coming around this way up through the negative uh, voltage of, our, of R1 as well. So that one's coming like this. So Ohm's law says that the voltage is equal to the resistance times the current. So the resistance is R1 and the current. If we have, this is I1 and this is I2. So if we have I1 positive, but we're subtracting I2, that's going to give us our net current going through this resistor. So it's going to be I1 minus I2. Because of the way that I1 is 
Okay, sorry about that, my camera died. So I was saying for V1, since we have I1 coming down through the positive voltage and I2 going up into the negative voltage, the voltage is going to be R1 I1 minus I2. So we're going to write that right here where we have V1. So we're going to replace that with R, R1 times I1 minus I2. We're going to do the same thing for V2. So if we look at V2, we know we have R2, and then what mesh currents are going through V2? Well, if we look at it this way, we have, again, I1 coming down through the positive, so it's going to be I1, and then we have I3 coming up to the negative, so it's going to be minus I3, just like we did for V1. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 6 volts. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to replace our resistance values. So we had R1 equals 1.5K. So we're going to have 1.5K. And we're going to distribute. So I1 minus 1.5K I2. And then R2 we had as 3.3K. So it's going to be 3.3K I1 minus 3.3k i3 and that's going to be equal to 6. Now for the final step for this we're going to collect like terms so we have 4.8k i1 minus 1.5k i2 minus 3.3k i3 equals 6 volts. And this is going to be the first equation that we're going to be putting in our matrix later. So I just usually say equation 1 next to it. And then we're going to do the same thing for mesh 2. We're going to say KVL mesh 2. So for mesh 2, if we start right here and we follow our finger around, we have plus V4 plus V3 minus V1 equals 0. So V4 plus V3 minus V1 equals 0. And then we're going to write these voltages in terms of Ohm's law. So for V4, we know the resistance is R4. So what mesh current do we have going through V4? This one only has I2, so it's just going to be R4, I2. And then for V3, this one is sitting in two meshes. So it's going to be R3 times I2 minus I3, just like we did with the other resistors sitting in two meshes. And then we're going to minus I1. Now this signs can get a little tricky when you're subtracting a voltage. What I do is I write down the subtract subtraction sign, and then I don't think of it in terms anymore of the subtraction. I just say, okay, what is V1? Well, we already figured out in KVL mesh 1 that V1 is equal to R1 I1 minus I2, right? So we're just going to write that right here. R1, I1 minus I2, and that's equal to zero. So then we're just going to put in our resistor values and collect like terms. So we have R4, which was equal to 3.3K, so 3.3K I2 plus R3, which was 1.5K I2 minus 1.5K I3 minus R1, oops, R1 was 1.5k, so minus 1.5k I1 plus, because of that double negative there, 1.5k I2. And that's equal to zero. So if we collect like terms, we're going to get one point, negative 1.5k I1 plus 6.3K I2 minus 1.5K I3 equals 0 volts. This is going to be our second equation that we're going to be putting in our matrix. And lastly, mesh 3. So we're just going to say KVL mesh 3. So if we start right here, 
we're going to start at R5, so it's going to be V5 minus V2 minus V3 equals 0. So V5 minus V2 minus V3 equals 0. So V5 is going to be R5 for Ohm's Law times I3, since that's the only mesh current going through that resistor. And then, like we did in the previous mesh, we take this minus, and then we're just going to look at V2. So what was V2? V2 is R2 times, we have I1 minus I3. All right, same for V3. We take that negative sign, and then V3 is R3 times I2, right, because that one's going through the positive, I2 minus I3 equals 0. So, it's going to distribute our 5I3 minus um, our 2I1 plus our 2I3 minus R3 I2 plus R3 I3 equals 0. So when we substitute our resistor values in and collect like terms, we're going to get 6 point, or 680, 680 I3 minus 3.3 K I1 plus 3.3 K I3 minus 1.5 K I2 plus 1.5 K I3 equals 0. Collect like terms. We're going to get negative 3.3 K I1 minus 1.5 K I2 plus 5.48 K I3 equals 0 volts. And that is our third and final equation that we're going to be putting in our matrix. So for this part, what we're going to do is we are going to have our matrix. And even if you haven't taken linear algebra yet, this part is really easy to put in your calculator to get your answer. So we're going to take each, each equation and we're going to put it in our matrix like so. So the first equation, if we're looking at this one, we're going to have 4.8, negative 1.5, oh, K for each of those, negative 3.3 K, okay, those are from the equation one. You take the coefficients for each unknown. Um, equation two is going to give us negative 1.5 K, 6.3 K, and negative 1.5 K. And then equation three, we have negative 3.3 K, um, I2 is negative 1.5K, and I3 is 5.48K. So we have our matrix. These values are for I1 from each equation. This column is the values for I2 from each equation, and this column is the values for I3. Okay. And then that's going to be equal to 6, 0, and 0. So this is from equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. So you're going to go and you're going to go into your calculator and you're going to find RREF for matrices. Um, and what that is is it's reduced row echelon form. You don't have to know what that is. If you don't, that's okay. Just find it on your calculator. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put a matrix for it to do RREF on. And the matrix that we're using is going to have three rows and one, two, three, four columns. So we'll just put that in there. Three and four. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fill in each entry with the values that we got from our equations. So the first one we had 4.8 K. The second one is negative 1.5K. Third one, negative 3.3K. 
and the last value is the value that that equation was equal to. So for the first one, it was 6. So that's what goes right there. And the next one, we had negative 1.5k, 6.3k, negative 1.5k, and that equation was equal to 0. And for the last row, we have negative 3.3k, negative 1.5k, uh, 5.48k, and that equation was also equal to 0. And before we press enter, we're just going to double check to make sure we entered everything incorrectly. Everything looks good. And here, yep. Okay, so we're going to press enter. So what this does is it's going to give us our values for I1, I2, and I3. So we have I1 is equal to um, 0 0.003275 amps. I2 is equal to 0 0.001336 amps. And I3 is equal to 0 0.002338 amps. So we're just going to write that down over here. So we have I1 was equal to 3.28, we're just going to convert to milliamps. I2 is equal to 1.34 milliamps. And I3 is equal to 2.34 milliamps. So there we have all of our mesh currents. Now we can easily find the voltage for, or the voltage for any resistor now, um, if we're asked. So say for example, we were asked to find V2 now. So what we would do is we would say, we know that V2, we found that in our equations before, right? We said V2 is equal to R2 times I1 minus I3, right? So we're going to say um, V2 equals R2 times I1 minus I3. Okay. So R2 for our equations was... 3.3k, so 3.3k, um, I1 was 3.28 milliamps, so 3.28 times 10 to the negative 3 amps, minus I3, which is 2.34 times 10 to the negative 3 amps. Put that in your calculator, so we have 3.3k times 3.28 milliamps minus 2.34 milliamps. Okay, and that gives us V2 is equal to 3.102 volts. So now that you have your mesh currents, you can see that you can find any voltage within your circuit super easy. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful. Um, I highly recommend um, mesh current method. I think it's very straightforward. You just follow your steps and you're good to go. All right, guys. Thanks.